Once upon a time, there was a kingdom called Idu. It was a prosperous kingdom blessed with fertile lands and thriving commerce. The people of Idu were mostly farmers and traders who lived simple but happy lives. At the center of the kingdom sat the royal palace, home to King Amika, his three wives, and twenty children. King Amika was a large, heavyset man known for his gluttony and greed. While his people toiled in the fields to grow food, the king spent his days lounging in the palace, gobbling plate after plate of roasted meat, stewed vegetables, and pounded yam washed down with gallons of palm wine. The king's gluttony became so extreme that soon the royal granaries were empty. The farmers could not keep up with the king's enormous appetite. Even the royal livestock was not enough. King Ameka sent his servants to seize livestock from the villagers, leaving them with nothing. His massive feasts included a dozen oxen, fifty chickens, barrels of fish, and baskets of fruit every day. The people of Idu pleaded with the king to control his appetite so they could feed their families, but he ignored them. The king's greed knew no bounds. He taxed the people heavier and heavier, seizing their grains and livestock until they had barely anything left to survive on. He even stole the gold jewelry right off the necks of women to fund his lavish lifestyle. Eventually, the people could take no more. They decided to plead their case directly to the gods. The villagers gathered outside the palace gates and lifted their voices in prayer and song, calling upon the heavens to deliver them from this greedy tyrant of a king. The gods heard their cries. That night, the oracle priestess of the kingdom had a vision telling her the gods would send a deliverer to save the people from King Amika's insatiable greed. The very next day, a strange young girl named Adanma came to the kingdom's marketplace looking for work. She appeared to be no more than twelve years old and quite petite, with sad, hungry eyes that tugged at the villagers' heartstrings. They could tell the poor girl had fallen on hard times, so they brought her food and offered her small jobs running errands in exchange for a few coins. What the villagers did not know was that Adanma was no ordinary girl. She was a python spirit who had taken human form to punish the greedy king. As Adanma spent time among the villagers, she heard more and more stories of King Amika's heartless exploitation and heir. The accounts of families going hungry while the king gorged himself made Adanma burn with rage. She decided she would accept the god's mission. One day, Adanma requested an audience with King Amika. The king who was busy stuffing his face with a leg of lamb, lazily granted her request. When Adanma was shown into the great feasting hall, she bowed low before the king and said, Your majesty, I have come to dance in your honor. The bored king nodded for her to proceed, then continued tearing into the juicy lamb leg. Adanma then began a graceful dance, twirling and leaping in time to the beat of a drum. The king watched her grease dripping down his chin onto his large, protruding belly. As Adanma danced faster and faster, the king started to feel very sleepy. His eyelids grew heavy and began to droop. Before long, he had dozed off in his throne, lamb legs still clutched in his chubby fingers. Right then, Adanma made her move. She shapeshifted from a young girl into a giant python, at least thirty feet long. The people in the hall screamed and ran for the exits. But the sleeping king did not even notice. Adanma slithered up to the throne and opened her massive jaws. In one quick snap, she swallowed King Amika whole. The only trace left of the king was his crown, which rested askew on Adanma's head as she curled up to sleep off her big meal. When the palace guards rushed in and saw the giant snake, they immediately attacked Adanma with spears and arrows. But the weapons could not pierce her thick scales. Adanma simply yawned a mighty yawn and swallowed up a few of the guards too, before slithering calmly out of the palace. The people of Idu rejoiced when they heard what had happened to their oppressive, gluttonous king. They sang and danced in the streets, celebrating their freedom from the king's greed. Meanwhile, Adanma slithered down to the river and fell into a deep sleep for many days to slowly digest the greedy king and guards. Eventually, she awakened, gave a loud burp, then shapeshifted back into a young girl. Her divine mission was complete. With King Ameka gone, his eldest son, Tobachukwu, took the throne.
Tobachukwu was a wise and kind young man who was loved by the people. He worked hard to repair the damage his father had done, giving back land and livestock to the villagers. He made sure everyone in the kingdom had enough food to eat before throwing lavish feasts for himself. The people entered a new era of prosperity and happiness. As for Adenma, she remained in the kingdom for some years as an adopted daughter of the high priestess. The people embraced her as a heroine, for she had saved them from King Amika's greed. Adenma enjoyed her quiet life among the villagers, but eventually, wanderlust took hold again. One morning, the villagers awoke to find Adenma had moved on to new lands and adventures unknown. The tale of Adenma the Python Girl and the Greedy King passed into legend. Parents told the story to their children as a warning against unchecked greed and tyranny. And the kingdom of Idu lived on in peace and justice, thanks to the brave girl who had answered the gods' call,